God is good. It was so amazing to be out there. Um, just to let you know, I took a lot of pictures. But yesterday, trying to uh, store it into my computer, I took the SD card out of my phone and put it in there. While doing that, I lost probably about 600 pictures from Thailand. The only thing I left is the one I put up in Facebook. Not happy. It was really amazing how God worked out things for us. Uh, let, me, let me get things situated. Let me explain. Uh, the reason is, you know, you, you know, Hope Church, we became a church 2008. We've been roaming all over the place with our home for the last 11 years. Even this is now still a rental place. But I realized when I went out, it just happened to be we, Hope Church, were able to support and help build two churches around the world, two in Thailand. Actually, I, 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 Pastor Luca from Aka tribe really wanted me to, me to come up while I was there. He talked to me a little too late. I couldn't go up because we helped them build a church like seven years ago. We raised $60,000. They built it, and they're waiting for some of us to come out so they can dedicate the building. And so I was out there in Thailand because we got to be part of this worship center for the, uh, the Life, Impact in, uh, Life, Impact, Life Impact Thailand. We are not the only ones who helped with, with this thing. There were a few other churches. But God gave us a privilege to be part of what God is doing. And I think the video really talked well. And then I wish one of these that I would take time to show some of the videos and talk about some, some amazing things God has shown me there. When I was in Thailand, let me just share about a couple of minutes before I go into message. I was in Thailand for about five days and then another um, 11 days in Korea. And about three, day, three days I spent traveling to Thailand and to Korea and all that. And, and Thailand, in four or five days, God broke my heart. What's happening there with the older child trafficking and sex trafficking happening, and also amazed at what God was doing through Lana and all the people. Amazing things God was doing. So this little lady from America with no help, God was doing amazing things to rescue these children and prevent other children being trafficked and also educate and heal and restore them in many ways. So a lot of things, and it was amazing to be part of that. I know our, our, our church center team, a couple of years ago, about 27 of us went out. But it was the first time I went to see. It was stirring and moving. Too much to think. But I was so thankful when he walked into the promised land, into worship center, there was hope. I, I sensed hope in the midst of all the darkness out there. God was a light in the darkness. Amazing things. It was good, and we got, we got to eat some good food, amazing food. And Lana knew where to take us. Some of us who, who, you know, she takes the same places to everybody else, I think. Anyway, this, what I want to share today, I've been really laboring as to what to share today. This is actually a message God gave me to share with the, uh, the worship center at Life Impact. And I felt like God was giving this word to them. I got to mention a little bit. I want to give a little fuller version. I think the word message, word of God is for us as well. I feel like God said, since you built, you tend to, tended to my heart and built uh, for worship center for others, I will build yours. I believe God said that to me. Well, you have built others and I'll build yours. Amen? Amen. But probably something you, do not, you, you may not know, and some of us in, and elders, some of the leaders in the background have been working for the last three, four months because our conch, our lease in this building is up about a couple months ago. We've been working because we have a choice whether we're going to keep on renting or move away or be part of the ownership of, the build, of, of this facility, this building, the gathering place. So and the elders and the other leaders are meeting with other church leaders and the the, uh, the gathering place leaders talk about what's happening. And we are in the process of looking and ironing out the details, see whether it's feasible for us to be part, part owner of this building together with the other churches. I know, I know some of you heard it, but this is in, in the process. 
And, and, and I remember when I, this week when I got, got back on Sunday night about after midnight, Tuesday morning I came to pray in the morning. As, as I walked in, God reminded me we are at the right place. We are Isaiah 56, 7 church. We are house of prayer for all the nations. This gathering place is Isaiah 56, 8. That's where this very building name comes from, Isaiah 56, 8. So Isaiah 56, 7 church came into Isaiah 56, 8 to a, in a gathering place. The gathering place, the verse, Isaiah 56, 8, talks about how God gathers all the you know, uh, remnants of Israel and God will gather other people together. You know, this building has the oldest Messianic Jewish congregation in the world here. And it is so prophetic that we are in this place. So we'll see how, how, we'll see how God works. God really moves within us and works through, through us to see whether this will be a permanent, so permanent home or not. We'll see how that works out. But I want you to be praying what God is doing in our midst. But before we, do, before we go anywhere with the older thing, we need to understand what it means, a house of God. Because first time Bible really speaks about the word house of God or Bethel is through a, a person, a story of a person named Jacob. Some of you may know, may know the story, and some of you may not. And I'll refresh your memory. I'll look at it a little bit. And as I was prepared the message, God really brought new things in me. Lately, after, after I prepare my message, I'll go to bed. In my dream, God will be just God will soak the message and give me things in the dream. And I've been getting up, repenting. I've been getting up, thinking about different things because God will put things in my head, in my heart, through my dreams while I was sleeping. So God has done some of that. Let's pray a little bit. Father, we just come right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amazing name of Jesus Christ. The name who is worthy. Who is worthy? Worthy is a lamb who was slain. Worthy is a lamb who takes away the sins of the world. But yet we celebrate, we, wor we worship you, God, today because you are not only slain, you are resurrected, you are seated in the heavens with the Father, you are the soon and coming King. We love you, we worship you, God, as we come today. But I ask that you will speak to our hearts through your word, speak to us, God, be here with us, meet us here, God. Be lifted up and glorified here, God. We love you. We honor you. We give you glory, God, for you are good. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I think I'll be doing probably takes about two or three or four different messages to share some of the things God has been showing me. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm sharing a little bit of what God has shown me in Thailand. Let me start. The title of the message is Bethel, the house of God. Literally the word Bethel in, uh, made of two words, bite, which means house in Hebrew. El is Elohim, or which means God. Bethel means house of God. I want to talk about that. Today's text is from uh, Genesis 28, verse 10 through 22. I'm going to uh, sort of explain and go through things and, and look at some of the things. I just want you to know, as God, as God gives us word of God, as God speaks to us, it has to be verified and founded upon the word of God, the true unchanging word of God. So I want, uh, what God is speaking to us, I want to really let it come forth from the word of God. Amen? Genesis 20, 28, verse 10. Okay. God is good? I don't know if you felt it here or not today as I walked and I sensed God's presence here. I walked and I sensed God's presence here. God is here. Whether you felt it or not, I know he's here. And I felt it. In our, in our praises and worship, I felt God's presence, delight in this place. Was not just because my daughter was leading. That, that helps too. And she smiles all the time. More than that, I felt God's presence. He's here. One of the things I learned about our traveling this time, something I already know, something we know, is that God reminded me, even when I don't feel anything, even when I don't see, see things, God is in our midst working. Often we miss what God is doing because we do not think he's here. We do not expect God to move, thinking that he's not here, but, but, but he's here. You know, and 
God, God is God who, God is a way maker, miracle worker, the promise keeper, light in the darkness. I'm quoting the this, this songs, okay? You thought I was being very articulate here, right? God is a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My, uh, my God, that's who he is. He is in our mess working. I want you to hear the word of God. Let me begin in verse 10. Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. I need to stop here. This is, and the whole, today's message, the story is really, really hinges on this verse 10. Why? Because it, it is, he said, then. Something happened before this that then is happening now. And the Jacob is the main person here. Then Jacob is such an important key in today's story. Now, I'm going to come back to this later and, then, and explain what I mean. Go, let, let me go on. Verse 11, it says, He and Jacob came to a certain place and placed certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. So Jacob is traveling from Beersheba, his home, to Haran, which is mother's, his, his father's home, homeland. As he's traveling, and he came to, there's no place to, there's no hotel on the way or motel on the way, no Howard Johnson's. So he stopped, and he's lying down and put a stone as his pillow lying down. Now something happens in that place. Now, as I mentioned, the person is Jacob. Then Jacob, I, I'm going to come back to that later. Let me go on. So Bethel was a place of dreams. Let me, explain, let me go on and explain. He had, and while he was sleeping on, on, on the, out in the field with a stone as a pillow, he had a dream. And behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heavens. This is where the song, Highway to, Stairway to Heaven, may have come from. I used to listen to it in my college days, Led Zeppelin. Yes, I used to listen. A ladder was set on the earth where he was lying, for, and, and, and his gold reaches up to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. He, he has a dream. And, and this is a spiritual dream, a dream of heaven. I don't know whether it looks like that or not, but it looks beautiful, doesn't it? I found a very interesting pic, you know, a very sort of comical uh, pic, with a picture like this as a guy in a wheelchair looking at the thing and use it as a four-letter word, S word. Look at it with a wheelchair, look at the stairs going up. Anyway, forget that, okay. He had a dream that, that night. It's a spiritual dream. Let me go back to verse, the, the reason verse 10 is important is because it says, then Jacob, the Jacob was not a ni nice guy. He was not a religious or holy person at all. The reason he's leaving, going to heaven, his parents' homeland is because he just stole his brother's birthright. His older brother Esau wanted to kill him. He is a cheat. He is a, not a good man, to say the least. He is a cheat and a, and a, and a, a usurper. He is a crook man. He's a selfish guy, not a person who deserves to have dream or encounter with God. To this man who is running away from home, fleeing from his brother, going to his father's homeland, this is a guy who has a dream. God has a God shows a meet with him in the place who didn't deserve anything. Meet with him in the place and gives him a dream. See, this is not a regular religious thing here. It's not somebody who worked up and who lived a good life, who deserved to meet God, who deserved to find God. No, it's not. That's not the story here. And, you know, and, and the thing is that on this, in this verse, when, 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 he, when he saw angels going up and down the ladder, later in John chapter 1, Jesus talks about, about that verse and applies to himself. Jesus says, 
And Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. This is what the dream of Jacob was about on the Son of Man himself. You see, that, that dream of, of, of he, that ladder stairway still going to heaven was about Jesus. You see, this Jacob has a dream of God. Bethel is a place of dream. Bethel, that place, was a place of dream. I was talking with Lana. Lana told me that when, there were, uh, when God was giving promised land and, and everything, and life impact in Thailand, and God gave them a lot of, God spoke to them saying, it'll be a place where many will find dreams, dreams of God. And a place where you meet God, and Bethel house of God is where you'll find your dreams. You'll have dreams of God. Let me go on. It is also, Bethel is also a place of God's promise. Look, you, you need to see what God says to this J- man named Jacob. Getting a little warm here. I'm getting already excited. God is good. And behold, and, God, and the Lord God stood above it and said, I am the Lord. See, I wish I could do a Bible study with you. If you look at the word Jacob, it didn't say regular Lord. It said L-O-R-D with all caps. That is very specific. That speaks of Yahweh, a name God revealed to Israel only. That he is not just a Lord, a master, but he is Yahweh, the God of the Bible, God of Moses and God of the Bible. And that Lord, I am the Lord, the God of, of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. Let me stop right here. Think about this. God shows up and shows in the dream, shows him the stair to heaven, and God begins to speak to him. God says, I am the God of your father Abraham and God of your father Isaac. You see, when you look at this, Jacob didn't know God at all. Even though he had a very spiritual a father of faith, Abraham as his ancestor, grandfather, and his father who knew God, and apparently Jacob didn't know God. And God says, God shows, showing up and says, I am the God of your father, your grandfather. Because Abraham loved God, because Isaac loved God and followed God. Their legacy, because of their legacy, God is showing up. God is coming to Jacob. This is a side note here. I didn't write this down on my notes. The reason Bethel is important is not only is for me, but it's for my, my, my descendants, my sons and my daughters. I seek and I follow up to God, not only for myself, so as I do seek, I seek God and search for God, as God blesses me, what I see is that God, the blessing God is granting me, legacy God is granting me, begin to flow down and begin to be a source for my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, because God said, God said in the word of God, to those who love God, God said, I'll visit up to a thousand generations. Amen? One of, the, one of the hope, the dream that I have was that because I'm an immigrant, you know, my older generation, because of language and culture issues, they couldn't worship with younger generation. But because we are English-speaking generation, what I wanted to see was I want to see my daughters, my, my sons, my grandkids be able to worship together. I want them to see how their grandfather and grandmother love God and seek God. It takes three, four generations for gospel to be really established in people's lives, for our lives to really have a basis where we will stand before God. You see, here, God shows Shows up to Jacob and says, I am the God of your father, Abraham and Isaac. Just as I promised them, I'm going to promise to you. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. You see, God speaks few things. God speaks about the land. God speaks about his descendants. God, and, and the reason is, God has already given promises to Abraham, his grandfather. And his father, Isaac. And, and Jacob does not know. But God began to remind him the promise he has given to his ancestors. And God, said, God is saying, the promise I've given to them, I'm going to fulfill it in you. 
I'm going to pass it on to you because of, of their faithfulness. God says, the land that you are lying down, I'm going to give it to you. This is what God promised to Abraham. God told Abraham on, on the mountain, look to the north, south, east, and the west. Every place you look, see, every place you, your foot treads on, I've given it to you, this land, as your inheritance. God is reminding him, the promise God has already given, the promise that, that this land will be yours. This is important because he was a foreigner living in a, a strange land. You know, as a, no, I know not, every, every one of, not everyone here is immigrant background, but those immigrant background people, what is important is because I'm a stranger and a new person in a new land, having a piece of land calling my name on it is important. That that says I belong here. God is saying, this is the land you belong. This is the land I'm giving it to you as promises. And God then says, your descendant, I'm going to bless your descendant. God has told Abraham and Isaac and, and, and them saying that I will bless you. Your descendants will be great. That's what, that's what God reminds Jacob. The descendants will also be like the dust of the earth. Like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. That phrase is really what God literally spoke to Abraham when he said, look to the north, south, east, and west. I'll give you the land to you. In you and your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That is also the promise God has given to Abraham. Through you, every, all the families of the earth will be blessed. God is reminding Jacob the promise he already given. I'm going to give it to you, fulfilled in you. God is God of promise. When God promises, he fulfills it. He fulfills it in his time, perfect time, perfect way, perfect means. As somebody mentioned, there's a thing called perfect delay. Most of us do not like delay. This thing called perfect delay. There's a perfect delay. When God lets God seems like he's delaying things to make everything perfect. This is what happened to Lana. Lana thought, she, Lana heart was for Brazil. And she thought God was sending her to Thailand for just three, four months. She ended up staying 17 years. Now, after 17 years, God prepared Brazil perfectly. Because what she has done in Thailand, God opened the door in Brazil after 17 years. Now, doors opening up so fast. Open wide because there was a perfect delay. God is doing all this. God says, your descendant, not only your descendant will be a lot like dust of the earth, they will spread out. Spread out. They will be, they will spread out all over the place. God says, I'm going to send them all over the place. I don't know what ran into my eyes. Sorry. And God reminded him that you, in you and in your descendants, all the family of the earth will be blessed. This is a gospel, isn't it? God didn't just save us so we will be blessed. It's a, there's a, a phrase that Lana used. I heard it over and over when I was in Thailand. She said, God rescued so they could rescue God rescued those children who are being trafficked, who are in danger. God rescued them and strengthened them so that they will be rescuers. God didn't just save us so we'll be blessing unto ourselves. Yes, God blesses, God strengthens us, but God did that so that we may be a source of blessing to all the families of the earth. If that's not happening, then something is, something is dying in us. One of the most illustrious illustra illustrations in the topography of Israel is that there is a, a Jordan River flowing through the whole of Israel, middle of Israel. And in the bottom of it is a Dead Sea where the river comes in and there's no, no way out. That's the where everything, all the water comes in and it stays in there. And it is, has, I think there has so much of sodium in there because the water is dried up in the place, just locked in the land. Nothing can live in the place. When blessings flow, when it fills that shit, becomes a curse. On the north of Israel is there's a lake, lake of Gennesaret, lake of Galilee. Same river fills that place, but that that place 
teams with fish and beautiful life. Because when God blesses you, supposed to be, we are supposed called to be a tunnel, channel of God's blessing to others. Amen? Let me move on. God's promise is, is that I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. You see, remember, Jacob is running away from his brother, running away to another country, fleeing from his brother. God's promise is, I'm going to be with you. I'll protect you wherever you go. Look, this is what God says. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. God said, I am promise-keeping God. I'm, I keep promises I've given to your father, your grandfather. I, I'm keeping the promise I've given to you. I'll fulfill it until you come back to the land. I'll, I'm with you. I will be with you. You see, Bethel is a place where God declares his promises. God, where God not only declares but also fulfills his promises. How so God is a place where God releases and declares his promise over you. you know, and, and, you know, I think I mentioned this. And one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Jeremiah 29, 11. A lot of people love that verse. Right, Jeremiah 29, 11, right? People know that verse, which says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord God. But I like King James Version. It says, I know the thoughts I have for you. Not just plan. He, he has many good plans for you, but I know thought I have for you. When, when, I, when I say to Holly, I've been thinking about you. Thank you. That means I like you, right? I've been thinking about you. The word of God says, God said, I have, I have, I know the thoughts I have for you. God said, I have many, many thoughts for you. Countless. At Psalm 119. I have countless uh, thoughts for, over you, planned for you. God said, I got, and God, in, in the house of God, God promised, God grants his promises, fulfill his promises. God is good. The clock is confusing me. Now the clock is faster than before. Let me go on. Um, Bethel, house, Bethel, house, Bethel, the house of God is place of God's presence. You see, the house of God was not a place where we come and do religious things. Ultimate desire of God and God's house was that, that we will meet with him. We will be with him. He will speak to us. God says, after God spoke to Jacob, Jacob wakes up from the sleep and says, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. When he lied down, he, he just slept. Didn't, he thought it was a normal place like any other place. He didn't know God was there. He wakes up and said, this is an amazing place. God is here. I didn't know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is, is this place. This, this is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. This is the house of God. Where House of God meaning God dwells here. The gate of heaven where God, there's a doorway, gateway into heaven. He realized that something happened here. He saw an open door into heaven. God's house here. I like this. I, I thought it was a nice picture I found. From Google search is so good. Inspires me all the time. Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. At the end of after the message, we're going to sing a song. That, that in the one the song that talks about, even, even when I don't feel it, God, you are working in my life. Even, though, even, even when I don't see it, God is working in my life. How often it is that we come and even though God is in the place, we, do not, we are not aware of it. That's what happened even today when I walked in, I knew God was here. God, I, and, and it's not because I have to sense it, but because his promise is there and I know God is here. And, and we forget that. House of God. House of God means where God dwells, where God comes. And also it's, a, it's the gate of heaven. I, look at this. I like this too. Right? And he was afraid. How awesome this, is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is a gate of heaven. See, throughout whole, whole history, people have been looking for heaven, the way to heaven. They tried all kinds of different ways. They 
try philosophy, they try different religions. This is where and, uh, Jacob said, this is the gate of heaven. He saw that stair going into heaven and angels going up and down into heaven. And this is the gate of heaven. He said, see, Bethel, house of God is gate of heaven. House of God is where God dwells. Now I need to explain a whole lot more here theologically. Because we, our God lives, dwells within us. We become house of God as well. But as we, as a corporate body of God together, a dwelling place of God, God's presence is as we gather together in a manifest way. I mean, let me move on. Bethel is also a place where Lord becomes my God. You see, Jacob wasn't a believer yet. Jacob was not a righteous person. He is not a one who believed in God yet. He is not. But yet God met him with the dream. God showed him heavens. And God spoke to him and spoke his promises over him. Because, and, and, and this is the place and, and the, in the Bethel that he, God is becoming his God. This, this is where he is becoming God's son. Look at what, uh, look at what happens here. So Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set it as a pillar and poured, it, poured oil on his top. He called the name of the place Bethel. However, previously the name of the city was Luz. He called the place Bethel, that place he slept, where he met God and encountered God. He called it Bethel. Now from there we begin to use the word Bethel all over the place, house of God. But God dwells. He worshipped in his own way. He worshipped differently than we do. He didn't have any guitars or a drum. But he got up and honored God and put a pillar and, and worshipped God with, you know, uh, uh, all, all pouring over. That's how they worship in those days, honoring God as God of their place. And then he made a vow. Look at what he says. Then he, Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me on this journey that I take and will give me food to eat and gar garments to wear and I, and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. You see, he, God was not his God yet. And you see here, you, see, you, see, you still see Jacob's human nature. He was a deal maker. He was a, you know, a, a, a selfish, crafty guy. He's still trying to make deal with God. God, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. He has not, he has not come to know God yet. He's not a, a child of God yet. He's not a believer in God yet. But if you are good to me, God, then you will become my God. When he says you will be my God, he's not just saying, oh, like religiously, he's talking about you are my God, meaning I will serve you. As my Lord, my God, I will trust in you. You are my God. That's what he's saying. You see, he's not a believer. He's not one who trusts in God yet. See, but he's making a deal. Wow, God, if you do this for me, I'll do this. You know, the vow sounds, sounds nice, but it is not as good as it could be. God, I, whether, whether you bless me or not, you are good God. I love you. And when he began today with the song, one of my favorite songs, new favorite song, nothing else. I'm not here for blessing. God, you don't know me. Jesus, you don't know me anything. I just want to be here with you. See, that's a greater declaration and love for God. But here, God even honors this vow. God, if you will be with me, if you will keep, keep, uh, keep me, and if you will Protect me if you will bring me back safely, if you will take care of me, then you will be my God. You know, God honors those things. And, you know, and, and the battle is place where he will become a child of God. He'll, he will be a follower of God. He will be a servant of God. This is where God will become his God. See, Bethel is a place where God is my Lord. There's a couple of things. Uh, and the thing that, as I thought, looked at it, you know, yeah, Bethel House of God is many things. It's a place where God keeps promises. It's a place of God's presence. 
It is place where her God is my Lord. It is place where we have dreams of God renewed. But more than anything, as the thing that really God reminded me of us, go back and see who, to whom this vision and dream and the promise were given. If it was given to Abraham, I, it makes sense. It was given to, let's say, you know, Paul, it makes sense to me. It's given to Jacob, most unlikely person. He is a cheat. He stole his brother's birthright with, with a bowl of porridge. And not only that, he stole his brother's birthright by putting uh, animal skin over him, lying to his dad, getting father's blessing. You know the story. And this crooked man who didn't deserve, God meets him in the, in the, the Bethel. Because, and then in the next 20 years, whatever God promised, God fulfills it. Because God is transforming him, making him to him uh, as a person who comes to know God and meets God. He gets transformed and changed in the grace of God. See, Bethel, how second is a place where people who do not deserve can come. It comes and God is transformed by the grace of God. That's what happened at, at, at the life impact in uh, promised land. These kids who are trafficked, who are rejected, who are, who are broken and thrown away, who are uh, abused, are rescued, who are rejected by society, who are, who are thrown away. Probably, I know you didn't catch this. One of the last, uh, one of the last piece, uh, one, sec, one second on the video, you see the little girls dancing and you know, doing all that. One of the girls on the, on the left hand side, you didn't see it because when you, as she was sitting next, after all that, she was sitting with Anne. She had a lot of scars on her face. She has, a, uh, she has a mental issues. Whether she, they, think she, they, they don't think they could walk, she could speak and do anything normal. But that girl was rescued, who was rejected by family, now is restored, now singing and dancing with other kids, growing, and she was able to uh, interact with the kids. But I saw many who were rescued in different places they found home in God. God is granting them a place where he will not only restore them and rescue them, say, God, I'm going to send them out to the nations. Send them out to the nation. They will be rescuers. And that's what God was doing in building worship center at, in the very center of the promised land where Lana's life impact is. And God was speaking to me saying, House God is not, Bethel house of God is not for the righteous people. It is a place of broken people who don't deserve, who are broken, who have no reason to come to God. This is where God will meet with them. God will transform them. God will renew them. God will grant them new life. God will be their God. God will, God will show himself faithful that God is a way maker, miracle worker, transforming our lives. He is a promise keeping God. He's a light in the darkness. That's the God. That's what battle is about. Somehow we have made, we have think, we thought that church of house of God is for the very put together people, nice people who are trying to find a good life. No, those, I mean, those are all invited, but it is first of all for those who are not invited. Those are broken, those are weak, those do not deserve. That's us. That's what house of prayer for everyone is. Isaiah 56, 7 says, God said, foreigners are accepted. The eunuchs are accepted in the house of God. For it will be a house of prayer for all the peoples. But they will meet God. That's what Bethel is about. God is doing that. And, and God is doing that in our midst. God is building his house. God is building his house and starting with us. Starting with us. And let me go back to the verse. Then Jacob, how undeserving person, God meets in that place. I don't know where you are today. And this, this whole two and a half week trip was such a, a huge emotional roller coaster me, roller coaster for me. I went to Thailand, my heart is broken. See, I, I see people living in the dumps. Literally on the, on the top of the garbage. They're literally being thrown away. The India, they're living. I have pictures of kids not, not going to school, but digging through the uh, uh, trash to find some recyclable materials so they can gather for their family's sake. 
And I've seen kids living in that no man's land, they call it, where you know, they're living next to pigs and all kind of things, living on the shacks or not, and they're being trafficked. They're easily trafficked by poachers and all kind of things. I saw kids. And, on, and I've seen how God in that place, a light shined, even through one, one, young, one young woman and some others, and rescuing them from that place. They're finding home in God. And they, they, not only were they rescued, now they become, they meet God and they become rescuers of others. They are transforming the grace of God. Because Beth, the house of God, is where we find God's promises. This is where God's promises come. This is where God changes us. This is where we become people of God and God, where God becomes our God. And, and the house of God is where God's presence comes. God's presence comes. God is here with us. I know as Christians, wherever we go, God is with us. But if, if God said, if two or three gather in my name, my presence, my, my manifest presence will be with you. That's our God. That's our God. I believe God is doing that here as well. God is building a place called House of God. Bethel is House of Prayer for all the people. If you feel like you're broken, you don't deserve, you're welcome. If you think, I, need, I, I am just not fit for this, no, you're welcome. You don't, you don't, you feel like, who would, ever, who would ever want me? You are accepted in God. Oh, God is good, God. Amen? I'm going to ask the priest to come sing one of my favorite new songs. I gave them only five minute notice. I called him in the morning. Can you do this? Initially, they said, I don't know. But when I came, they, they worked it out. I want you to look at the words. Our God is here. I'll just tell you while they're getting set up. I'll tell you one, you know, one, there are many testimonies, one testimony. You know, I carry this oil, you know, and, uh, you know, this oil, you know that. You, you, you heard of me, this all from the Bible. When I was in Korea um, with the, the old uh, water revival people, I was, I was helping with them. I, was, I prayed for every single people who got baptized. I remember one of the ladies who came, she's apparently a, a past, some, some a youth pastor, and this lady came. And she, she was telling me that she couldn't eat for 30 days. Somehow, whatever the reason, she wasn't able to swallow anything. Even a porridge, she couldn't really swallow. She barely drank any juice, whatever. And she was there, and, and I, I took, I said, I have a brand new, I got a brand new bottle. Can, you, you, should, you can drink some of this. I heard of testimonies of people actually drinking this oil a little bit, and, and it's not the oil who, who heals you, but our God does. It's a point of contact with God. And she drank a little bit. I prayed with her, and I prayed for her, and then she got baptized in the water. Next morning, she came and testified how she was able to eat and drink again the next day. And I didn't feel anything when I prayed, when I gave the word, when I prayed with her. I mean, she was, you know, she was being, I saw being, she being touched. But I didn't, I had, didn't have faith things would happen. But God is good God. And she came as, you know, I was able to eat. And, you know, at the end, she wanted to come and thank me. It's like, you don't need to do that. Please, you embarrass me. Don't do that. But anyhow, God is in the midst of us, even when you don't feel it. Even when you don't sense him, he is here. And so that's what house of God is about. And, and, and Jacob said, you know, God, God is here, but I, do not, I didn't know it. You see, our God is here with us. Because his promise is if two or three gather in his name, he'll be in their midst. Not just regular presence, but manifest presence. His glory comes in our midst. Our God is real, mighty God. And at the House of God, you will see God's promises released and God transforming hearts and lives. Amen. Let's sing this praise. Waymaker. 